So, lately I've been watching a lot of speed paint story times. I love hearing other people talk and I love watching other people draw. So, since I have a couple of insane stories that I want to share, I thought to myself, why not? Also, I want to apologize if it's hard to understand me that this video is subtitled, so please, please, please bear with me. Hi guys, I'm Lucy and today I'll tell you the story about a guy that nowadays still talks bad about me for no reason at all. So please go ahead and grab your popcorn and snacks while I share some inspired tea with you. I'm serious, pause this video and go for your snacks, I won't go anywhere. So this story happened many years ago, I was probably... no... It was probably around... 215 or 16 when I was still super active in the Brony fandom. I drew a lot, got some commissions, and I went to literally every other meet in my city. You know, Brony meets where people just go and talk and stuff. Anyway, I talked to a lot of people and I was bullied relentlessly for some reason over the internet too. Back then, I was a bit of a bitch because in my... You know, my inexistent fame got the best of me from time to time, and also I had an undiagnosed mental illness, so maybe that's one of the reasons why. Anyway, moving on. I remember in one Ronnie meet, I met this guy, let's call him Carl. Back then, people asking me if I was this artist and then getting excited and nervous around me wasn't uncommon, but it wasn't something that happened every time either. You know, it's something that happened every now and then. Regardless, they got excited to meet me and I got excited because someone knew who I was. Meeting people for the first time in person after speaking with them on Facebook wasn't uncommon either. This guy was something else though. I have the memory of a goldfish, but I remember he was a bit awkward, you know. It didn't bother me at first since I was super awkward too and barely had any, you know, any social skills. He got near me and followed me around and everyone with his camera and I remember him asking me questions from time to time. For little, young and naive Lucy this was super awesome and made me feel important. We spent a lot of the time together at that specific meet. You know, we were just talking about normal stuff, our likes, dislikes and he even showed me some of his drawings. I remember they were mostly logo type designs and I think those were for his YouTube channel. Anyway, you know, everything seemed pretty normal to me when I was just getting to know him. I don't remember exactly what happened in that specific meet but I probably had a good time since Carl and I keep talking. We weren't super close at the beginning but it was obvious he considered me a friend. And I had no problem telling people, oh yeah, amigo, since in my city we call pretty much every stranger amigo. But back then I was very selective of whom I called a friend, because people used to try to befriend me in exchange of free art. I didn't mind talking with Carl though. He seemed like an okay guy. A little odd, but okay. Anyway, the time was passing and we got to the Brony Mexican. I was attending as an artist and I made a couple of traditional commissions and also showed samples of my digital commissions for the people who wanted a digital piece after the convention. I was also selling some prints and most, most of the time I got distracted and wandering around while my boyfriend helped me with the stand. Fun times. So at some point in the convention, Carl comes to say hi. I got excited whenever I saw a familiar face because aside from the conventions and meets, I didn't get to hang out with my friends a lot and I didn't like to get out of my home that much. I grew up very, very, very sheltered, so getting out of my house was really weird to me. Still, I know we're in quarantine and stuff, but I miss going out. I really miss it. So Carl and I had a little chat and he wanted a commission. I was like sure after hearing what he wanted and gave him a price. Now I gave my commission super super cheap, like dirty cheap, even cheaper than I do now. 
The commission in question was a traditional drawing with background, full pencil colored, and three characters for 40 Mexican pesos, which right now is a little less than two dollars. He didn't give me the money yet, but since I had a couple more to finish before the convention finished, I, I didn't mind. I kept drawing and just existing while he came back, and then, when he came back, he told me that his mom didn't want him to spend the money on a commission, which, okay, it's fine, no problem. I understand not a lot of people can see the value in art, especially in a third world country, and especially when back then I wasn't amazing. So I really, really didn't mind, it didn't bother me at all, but, you know, Carl had around 16 or 17 back then, and his mom was always around in the midst. Weird, but okay, my mom was overbearing too when I was around that age, so I kinda understood that she was everywhere. So his mom just came to me and started to talk to me, and she seemed skeptical that I actually make the drawing. I, I can't remember, she was looking at me funny, and now that I think about it, she didn't seem to like me that much, for some reason. I don't know, this was the first time that I ever met this woman. And, well, she implied that I could, you know, just take the money and disappear. But, well, what could I do about it? I don't think she knew Carl and I used to be friends or something like that, but I calmly said something along the lines of I've had a lot of happy clients with my artwork and many of them are here right now. But she didn't give in. I remember being so nervous and a bit offended because that never happened to me before, but I just tried to keep my cool while we had that change. In the end, I offered to make the drawing first, and once it was done, she and Carl would pay me, which seemed, she, which seemed, which seemed, <laughs> which she seemed happy with. After all, it was a traditional drawing, so I didn't have anything to lose, right? Oh boy, I was so, so wrong. So, remember when I told you about my undiagnosed mental illness? Yeah, I have depression and anxiety, I don't treat it as a secret, and I didn't get properly diagnosed until I was 20, 21, probably, and I'm 22, I'm about to turn 23, so, yeah. Also, remember when I told you that I have the memory of a goldfish? For me, time and periods of time are super fuzzy for some reason, like super foggy, and I struggle a lot putting my memories on the timeline. But a lot. For me, recalling some events is like a dream, you know, that you kinda know what happened, but is super foggy and you can't quite reach and, you know, put what happened into words. I don't know, is it's weird. So, yeah, sorry if my recap of the events is not like super accurate, I'm doing what I can. The thing is, my mental health got really, really bad. The cyberbullying wasn't helping at all, and I didn't even have the energy to lift my pencil and draw. So I got really late in my commission deadlines, and some people didn't pay me the other half for how late I was, which honestly was fine. I mean, we had an agreement, and I failed to fulfill our agreement, so there were no harsh feelings. Around this time, I started to develop anxiety every time I got a notification because I thought it would be a hate comment or someone threatening me or someone making a demeaning meme of me. It, it wasn't pretty. I was super scared. My heart started pounding in my chest and it hurt every time my phone vibrated. Sometimes I even started to sweat cold. So, yeah. I have a video where I explained how I painted while I was making my business cards prior to the convention. If you have a good grasp of Spanish, you can see some hurtful comments that stopped me from doing tutorials for a while. They still hurt when I read them, even now. So, um, anyway, Carl and I keep talking and sometimes he asks for his commission, which, again, he didn't pay for, but 
I gave my word that I actually do it, so I don't blame him for ask either. So yeah. Um, after a bit of time, I managed to finish it, and it took me hours for less than two dollars. And yet, people insisted of telling me that my commissions were too expensive. I used to get folklore digital commissions for ten dollars, you know, with background and everything. It wasn't pretty, but oh well. At least I got a bit of money for what I wanted and my parents slowly started to stop teasing me and my hobby, so it was okay, right? Right? When I finished his commission, I took a picture and sent him to him and I was really waiting for him to see if he liked it or not. And he did. All that was left was to think some word to me so I could hand him the commission and he could pay me. This is where things started to get weird. He started to ask for my phone number to, you know, he could ask me to arrange a meetup, to which I declined since Facebook was fine for that, and I hated calls even before working on the call center. Instead of saying, oh, okay, I continue by a message, like, you know, we've been doing since we met, he started spamming calls via Facebook. You know, when you accidentally press the call button, but he didn't do it accidentally so he kept pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing and spamming and spamming and spamming and spamming i don't want to say what happened that made me hate calls with a burning passion but it was pretty bad and kind of a personal trauma to me and i froze my phone froze and everything froze he was literally spamming calls one after another after another after another I just told him that I didn't want to call, but he kept insisting. He said it was to keep communicating before and during our meetup, but I still think Facebook was fine. Carl also asked for my WhatsApp number, which I really didn't have at the, at the time, and this kind of set him off. And he kept spamming the call button. He, he didn't stop. And at this point, I was really, really uncomfortable and a bit scared, so by a text I suggested some work to meet, but he wanted to meet on the other half of the city, because something related to his mom. Maybe she didn't let him go too far away without him. I mean, you know, without her. Or maybe Carl was busy. I don't know. I still don't know. So, just a bit of a context here, Carl was, uh, you know, really small, chubby guy. And I was taller than him, but this kind of overbearing attitude towards me is enough to make me feel scared because, you know, <laughs> it's it's really not nice when someone thinks they're your owner. So, yeah. Anyway, I told my boyfriend about this and he was going to go with me in case something happened and also to make me feel a bit more, you know, relaxed, calm. Anyway, uh, Carl refused to confirm whether or not we were going to meet on that certain day on that weekend and since he didn't confirm I just did something else a day and this made Carl even more angry. Uh, whenever someone posted, even if the post had nothing to do with me, he started to talk shit about me and you know that I was a hoe for example, that I was just filler to the burning Mexican, that I was a, a sucker. He did it in every post he found, even if those people weren't my friends so I or if I couldn't see it. God, uh, I found some screenshots. I might uh, leave them in in the screen. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I remember how weirded out I was and a bit hurt because I was starting to consider Carl my friend. So yeah, I, I even told him I thought we were friends in one of his comments. But yeah, I, I don't remember what, what did he say. Before I could even talk it out with him, he made a public post without tagging me, confessing that he liked me a lot since a long time ago. Uh, so I was even more freaked out. Um, a friend of us posted, I hope Rodrigo, uh, Rodrigo is my, my boyfriend. Um, I hope he doesn't see this, this thing. Um, I just commented, this is not something you should say in public or something, uh, I don't remember exactly what I said, it it was a private matter that, uh, I don't know, I just think it was something private, and he just replied, it doesn't matter, your boyfriend won't see this, what the fuck, <laughs> what, I just, I don't know, I, 
I was so angry, so confused, and so stressed because everyone was telling me, Hey, Carl, say this in my post. I I told myself that I blocked him once I gave him his commission and I'd never ever speak to him again. But my friends and even my family told me, He didn't pay you, just, just don't. Don't give him anything, just block him. And well, it was less than two dollars. So uh, I ended up just telling him that I won't, give, I won't give him his commission since he didn't pay and that what he did was not okay. That if he had any problem with me, it should have, you know, been talked privately instead of, you know, uh, screaming our problems to, to anyone who will listen. Uh, he still complained about how I didn't want to call him and while being done with everything uh, I just blocked him. I exploded and told him that my trauma with the phone calls and I think that's when I blocked him. In a perfect world this would be the end of everything but no, it it got worse. <laughs> it got worse and everything, you know, it it just gets worse. Anyway, shortly after that, my boyfriend and some more people told me that Carl uploaded a video in which he shares our private conversation, in which you can see how he spams the calls, and I think my trauma was visible too, for the world to see. Uh, you know, he was trying to drag me, me down. He was trying to drag me down, to drag my name through the mud even more. Was he angry? Was he trying to get a response from me? I. I still don't know, and I might never know. Since I blocked him, I couldn't see the video, but in screenshots I saw comments for people siding with him. Right, guys, even with the conversation there, people were siding with Carl. I I have no idea why. Uh, in my script I said that I start fuming, but now that I'm listening to myself, it, it sounds like I'm scared, and I'm still scared. <laughs> I just... Uh, this is something that happens to me a, a lot, and I just don't understand why. Uh, I don't know. I, I hate people. <laughs> One of them even said, what a shame. I thought she was a great artist. Dude, what what the freak? Suddenly I'm not a good artist because I rejected a guy that was talking shit about me and low-key harassing me? Like, seriously? Why? Uh... So anyway, while my boyfriend was reporting the video for harassment, I I felt I had to say something, sort of like a public statement trying to clean my name because, uh, you know, sometimes my non-existent fame got to my head and I was really, really tired of people sending messages asking me like, dude, what, what just happened? And, well, I guess getting a bunch of messages non-stop, so I did it, uh, short short post explaining what happened from my side of the story which is pretty much what i've told you guys so far uh you know but uh a bit shorter like uh just a snippet of what happened and that's how i became the tea once again <laughs> uh yeah i wish it ended here but the universe hates us all and in this massive sims game that got abandoned a long time ago so it it gets worse again. <laughs> um, remember the, those running meets I told you about? Well, I love them, and it was a good a good excuse to see my friends and act stupid for a short while. I went with one of my best friends who knew everything that happened with Carl, and he wanted to protect me in case something happened, which I still appreciate to this day. If you're seeing this, hi, <laughs> thank you for doing that for me. Uh, so I went to this meet and of course Carl was there and his mom Because you know his his mom just went with him everywhere <laughs> I tried to ignore him and I pretend to be on my phone whenever he tries to engage in conversation with the people I was talking with and I replied for from time to time because I was trying to be polite trying to be the better person, you know I, I'm sometimes obsessed with trying to be a better person. Oh, also Someone give let me a plushy a plushy <laughs> How do I English? Uh that day someone give me a plushy of my OC. This becomes important later, I I swear. So when we were eating and someone was doing a raffle for a Princess Luna plushie, I think it was from Build a Bear. Yeah, I think it was from Build a Bear and that was one of the 
were times I had some spare money and I was like, heck, why not? So I got 10. <laughs> After that, all we went out and everyone was chatting with each other while we decided what to do afterwards since we had no plans. Uh, all, our only plan was, you know, do the raffle. <laughs> I was talking to some friends and then Carl and his mom approached me, asking to speak with me. I I wasn't mentally prepared for this, but in my obsession to be the bigger person, I just said, sure, sure, why not, let's, let's talk with each other. I didn't go alone with them though, remember my friend? Yeah, uh, he made sure to stay close to me while the whole thing went down. Carl was trying to apologize to me, but I don't even remember what he was saying. I just remember being a bit scared. His mom looked at me like I I danced on her dead family's graves. <laughs> right after burning their house. Uh, I don't know. I remember that at some point I just told Carl I didn't forgive him and I tried to leave the conversation with my friend trying, you know. My friend, while I was talking to them, he tried to get me away from Cole and this crazy woman and then his mom grabbed me by the arm and almost yanked me away from the group as if she wanted to isolate me. The... I... I just can't believe the audacity of this bitch. I... I was really freaking out at that point. Uh, I don't even remember what she told me. I just remember I got super angry when she exclaimed, well, how dangerous is my son that you needed a bodyguard? Uh, of course, this is roughly translated. Roughly translated, yeah. Um, anyway, luckily for me, one guy, one of the meets organizers not noticed and he got close to us and asked if everything was okay. This bitch, before anyone else could reply, say, yes, he doesn't want to talk with my son. Bitch, your son was almost an adult at the time. Uh, I don't even remember my exact words. I just remember I raised my voice and this guy helped me to get away from this crazy, crazy woman. If you're listening to this, I may not remember your name, but I remember that you are a godsend. I remember what you did for me that day, so uh, thank you. I remember Carl yelled at me, Mamona, while I try getting away. I'm not sure what the translation of Mamona is, but uh, the literal translation could be soccer. But in this context, I'm not exactly sure. Google says it could be something like dumbass, idiot, bitch, yakas, but none of them sounds as strong as that word, you know. Um, I love Spanish. <laughs> uh. So after I won the raffle and I was I was gift a Apple Jack plush too. <laughs> I I should really just stop here and calm down before going. Okay, so I'm I'm back. I think <laughs> I I won the raffle and aside getting a Luna plushie for the day, uh, a friend of mine gifted me a. Uh, an Apple Jack plushie because he he couldn't go home and get with a pony plushie. So yeah, I it was a good day, kinda. After that, we all decided to go and play pool. Let me tell you, I absolutely suck at pool, but I love it so much. <laughs> pool is pool is really fun. We were so many that we had to split in different pool tables and Carl got to play in the same table as me and I didn't want to seem rude with the girl I was talking to so I decided to stay in that table and try to play as if everything was normal. Sometimes Carl blew up at me for no reason. So yeah. <laughs> I At one time I caught him touching my OC's plushie for no reason at all. I exclaimed to him to not touch it and this guy almost yelled at me. Why? Just because it's your OC, no one can touch it? No, Carl, you can touch it because it's not yours. Did your mom, whom, by the way, hasn't stopped looking at me, didn't teach you to not grab other people's stuff? Also, someone else in that meet had another plushie of my OC, but that's another... You know, that plushie was in another table, so... I still can't believe his mom tried to isolate me from the others like that. Who... Who does that? That that woman is crazy. Uh, anyway, he... Uh, 
he kept talking shit about me and twisted the story for anyone who could hear. Right there. Some guys even sent me screenshots of him saying that I was ugly, that I look like a monkey and stuff like that. Uh, what? Carl, you, you even said you liked me. Why? Why are you so salty, Carl? <laughs> anyway, some time later, even months, I discovered he re-uploaded one of my animation practices to his channel. It wasn't great. It used to feature my OC learning how to hide her wings. I just... Uh, why? Why could you do that, Carl? Why? <laughs> what What was the point? Anyway, even years later, from time to time, he comes back with a fake account, trying to befriend me. My last contact with him was a month ago, actually, when we celebrated El Dia del Niño. I don't know if other countries do this, but I... This time I actually screenshot this, this conversation, so please enjoy why I roughly translate for you guys. Happy Children's Day and Happy Girl Day too. Uh, from Carl. You know, the guy that you sent to fuck himself three years ago. To which I replied, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> and he was like, because I have so many memories. Uh, anyway, just some, some explanation here be of language, because languages are fun. In Spanish, we don't have a gender neutral... In Spanish, we don't have a gender neutral word for children or kids, it's either niño, which means boy, or niña, which means girl, and it's common for people to bother girls telling them that they don't have their own day. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say that I confused him with another guy who has the same name, who also hates me for no reason at all, but that's a story for another day if you want to hear it. Uh, anyway, I, I blocked him after he replied. I'm sure there's a lesson to all of this, but... I don't know. I say to not stick to taking crazy. In my case, it will be don't talk with crazy. But I have no idea who's crazy and who isn't until it's a bit too late. I still have no idea why he got so angry with me or what drove him to do what he did. Part of me thinks that it could be partially his mom's fault. If that's the case, I really hope he got away from her and that he's safe now. I'm still upset, but I don't wish for him to for anything bad to happen, I I really hope that if his mom was a problem that he's safe now. Anyway, had you had any encounters with the, a crazy mom too? Please please let me know guys. I I really want to know if I'm not alone in this. If I think this video is going to be way longer than I expected, so if you listened until here, uh thank you for listening to me while I'm I'm having an attack <laughs> uh, anyway uh, I think that's that's all uh, see you next time bye